Seven is incredibly beginner friendly with his high damage, great AOE, and oh yeah, he's got this. Stormcloud, perhaps the single most broken ultimate ability in the game. With the right build, it has crazy duration, reduced cooldown, life leech, and the ability to easily turn tides and tilt your opponents late game. Team wipes and zoning potential are just two of the things that make this ultimate incredibly strong. Welcome back everybody, MinMax RPG, and today we're fortunate enough to get seven. This is quite difficult within the playtest because it's the most popular hero, and for the right reason. It does an incredible amount of damage, very fun to play, and many other things. I'm gonna tweak my mouse sensitivity here real quick. Finding better success the higher I make this sensitivity, and I plan to improve it some more, or increase it some more rather, just to kind of continue on with the success that I've had. I'm just kind of working my way up and getting adjusted to it. So the ability you saw in the introduction is Stormcloud. That is what's considered the ultimate ability, and you cannot unlock that right away. So we need to build up to that ability. We're gonna start off by taking Lightning Ball. That is the number one ability. This is essentially gonna shoot out an AOE. Towards the enemy, it goes in a line. If there's nothing there, it continues to go. Very strong, and in general, Seven's AOE damage is very strong. Multiple abilities have the potential of dealing AOE damage. And it looks like we're gonna be laning just against one opponent at least to start off here, we should be able to hold our own in this situation. We're going to go ahead and just try to farm up some souls in order to progress this character. Seven starts off fairly average. I wouldn't necessarily say it's weak because it does have some AOE with that lightning ball, but it's not really overpowered in the early stages. However, the later the game goes, the stronger Seven gets and is an incredible late game hero. So the scaling of this character is very strong. I may actually be able to secure a kill here. I'm at full health. I'm going to go in. Missed my melee attack. Uh, he's getting a lot closer than I wanted here, and perhaps I should not have done that, but looks like I make it out alive. So, managed to secure an early kill there. Now, need to clear some wave out and get back, and that is very unfortunate. I should have just perhaps run around and gone back to the base. Nonetheless, hopefully we can have just some laughs at that one. Next ability we're gonna unlock here is Power Surge. That's on the three, and this ability is gonna allow your attacks to splash. So again, some more AOE damage. And it's at this point where you can start entering some of the buildings, go on the rooftops and pick up additional souls. So as we work our way back towards the lane, keep that in mind. If I had not gone down there, I could have gone into some of the buildings and use that to farm some additional currency because now we just have a number of AOE abilities that we can just kind of use to clear out the rooms really quickly, get back into the lane, clear the lane out. And this is gonna allow us to kind of start the snowball effect that Seven has. Continuing to buff Lightning Ball. And again, I'm just trying to hold my own at this point. I really don't want to put a ton of pressure until I unlock Stormcloud. That is the bread and the butter, bread and butter, excuse me, of the build. And essentially everything is being based around that. All the items we're going to buy and so forth. And this is the ultimate build that you can find under the browse build section within the game. This is the most popular ultimate build. That's the reason we're showing that off. And not only is it popular, but it's very strong, very fun all the things you're looking for within a build. So it looks like we may have another hard engage here. Kind of surprised. Warden, the opponent that I'm facing in the lane, is a strong character as well. So perhaps they're trying to secure some early kills and may know that they have a slight advantage over my character this time. But so far we've just traded and I need to get out again. Hopefully I make it this time. Oh, I feel like he could have taken me down there. He may have lost me in the transition there. Fortunately for me. So let's play a little more conservatively. And I am losing the soul battle in this lane. I'm down about 500 souls. So I have some ground to make up. The warden is out farming me at this point. And I may want to kind of either put some additional pressure to deal some damage into that guard in and force him to make some decisions. Or I need to get into the buildings and start kind of closing the gap on that soul lead. Because as mentioned, Seven is a hero that we want to snowball. We need to get that currency. And if you aren't farming the currency, then you're gonna be behind with the character. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Feel like at this point, I have not done really anything of value for about 30 seconds and just reflecting on my own gameplay, but that is not good. In a MOPA, you always wanna make sure that you're doing something of value. It can be difficult to talk and play at the same time. So I can maybe write that one off, but in general, that was not my best choice. Just kind of lingering around, waiting for the wave to come. You should always be trying to do something productive rotating to another lane, farming souls wherever you can, and so forth. So I missed my lightning ball there. I don't think I really want to go in after. Had I landed that lightning ball, I might have been able to push again. 
And here we go. So back to kind of just stalemating for a few seconds here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and check out a building, and we should be able to at least clear some of this out very quickly, get back to the wave. Fire rate, very strong for this character. Fire rate, very good for every character, really. And now we can get back, push into this. He looks like he was just trying to push up while I disappeared. Maybe he thought I was returning to the base. Now, here we have the number two ability. This is a shorter range. It will actually essentially mark the target and cause them to take some damage. It's a little more difficult to get this ability off. Wow, big hit there. I did not expect for him to go down. I wonder if he got tagged by the Guardian and I didn't notice. But it seemed like he took an awful lot of damage. So we're just building up in the early game stages here. You can look at some of these middle game items or semi-middle game items. Depending on where you stand for souls. I'm a little bit behind, but that kill there... A little bit behind in terms of souls, just to clarify. But the kill there is going to allow me to farm a little bit. So I can kind of get caught up. And I think I'm okay to buy one of those semi-game items. And this is just going to allow me to kind of keep progressing the character. Opponent already back into the lane. So I'm just going to kind of continue to poke here. And again, I do not have my ultimate. So I'm not really pushing up. I'm really making no effort, essentially, to kind of take the opposing Guardian down in the lane. Just need to be patient. And this build gets far more exciting as the game gets later. So you just have to bear that in mind. This build is really a slow starter. This game in general is very slow to start. You have everything wiped, which is true of pretty much every MOBA I've ever played. So you're always gonna start at the very basics, but some MOBAs give you access to all your skills right at the start, some don't. This one, you have to choose one ability and build it up. So this game in general just starts very, very slow. And this build is slow. You might need to get out here. That's Warden's ultimate when he raises his fist like that. It's kind of a mid range on the skill. Definitely need to get out. Eight health. We are, oh boy. Maybe, there's a chance. Excuse me, sorry. All right, we made it. Hopefully he's not chasing us. We should be safe here. So this game, very slow. The build, very slow. Just keep those things in mind. As the game goes on, you will get stronger and stronger and the engagement certainly increases as well. So we have managed to kind of get to a point here where we've unlocked Stormcloud and this is where the fun is going to kind of start to begin and pick up some movement speed here positioning is everything with this ultimate you want to make sure that you have the enemies in the open when you're using this if at all possible unless you're using it to zone them reason for that is because if they line of sight you they don't take damage from this ability and this is part of the reason why this ability is so strong is because people are still learning characters and learning the game and many people don't realize they can line of sight it so here i get the warden in the open he line of sights me fairly quickly, but I still get a number of ticks on him before he manages to retreat. I mean, of course I want to kill him there, but mainly I'm just trying to zone him out. And I've actually got him back to the base at this point. So essentially just pushing him back so that I can clear, continue to farm, get about a thousand soul advantage on me at this point. So even though I've killed him one more time than he's killed me, he's essentially winning this lane since neither of us are pressuring the guardians to a tremendous degree. So very important that your positioning with the ultimate when you use it is on point. Otherwise, you will not get a tremendous value out of it. And this build being focused or built around the ultimate, you want to make sure that you're capitalizing on that. So wide open spaces are good. Multiple enemies are good. Has such a long duration, you can often cast the ability and just stay there and outlast other ultimates. So one character that comes in mind, is your motto that is the character in the top right of the enemy team they have an ultimate that will actually make them invulnerable for a couple of section seconds excuse me and then they'll gain some power but the ultimate you have stormcloud actually outlasts their ability and their invulnerability so you can cast it they can then go invulnerable and then they'll come out of that and you can still manage to take them down so it's a really strong trade there if you can trade ultimate for ultimate just retreating here a little bit Closing the gap a little bit in terms of souls, just still continuing to poke. And with that being said, and some of the AOE that we've mentioned Seven has, one-on-one -on -one situation isn't always ideal, right? We essentially want to have as many enemies around us as possible, especially once you unlock the leech. Once your ultimate ability leeches, you are just incredibly strong. You can stand amongst three enemies sometimes and just heal through the damage that you're receiving from the damage that you're outputting if they choose to stay and fight. And that's where this team white potential really comes into play. 
So we're, of course, going to be buffing the ultimate at this point whenever we have the opportunity to put more points into it. That was a good play by him to lock me down. Otherwise, I could have kind of pushed out further. So here I missed my lightning ball, so I can choose to just kind of clear out the trash. And this gets fairly repetitive, but nonetheless, that's kind of how you're going to play this, just waiting for the right moments. And we're about 10 minutes into this match. In another three or four minutes, we're going to start pushing out, rotating lanes. Guardian on this lane, one side or another, is certainly going to be down by that point. So the action will kind of start to pick up. And this is pretty true of the majority of games. I've certainly had a number of 15 minute matches. But in general, I would say around the 15 minute mark is when things start to pick up and get a little more interesting and the laning seems to transition into more roaming. And honestly, the game is a lot more fun at that point. I don't know if they're going to tweak anything in that regard. Here you can see I use my ultimate because I'm able to get up on top of that pillar and get him caught. And look how much damage that does. Now I have the potential to hopefully take him out, manage to get him with the last bullet in the round before I had to reload, so perfect. And again, think about that positioning, right? I jumped on top there because I knew that he was behind that wall, essentially, and that allows me to hit him with the ultimate, and then he has to retreat somewhere else to get out of line of sight. And we saw the warden line of sight earlier, so we know that he's aware of how my ultimate works. So the positioning there just secures the kill. So we'll get the guardian down here. We're actually kind of surprised that occurred. I thought the warden would have outpushed us in the lane, but now we can go back, see where we want to rotate to, and let the fun kind of begin. So we are, at this point, doing pretty well. We did suffer an early death, but we managed to trade. And other than that, we're kind of managed to actually surpass the souls, right? So now we're a thousand souls up on the opponent that we're laning against. And we're just going to kind of try to continue this and keep piling on the coins or the currency here, right? Because this hero scales and snowballs. So we just want to keep farming souls, whether it be in a lane, a building, rooftops, wherever you can find them, make sure we're picking them up. It's really important that we try to have the most souls in the game on this character. That's gonna give us the best advantage. Probably not gonna land that lightning ball, but I do get some damage out. Now I've got about a minute on my ultimate here. Can upgrade it, but I can't use it. And we should push this guardian down as well. Now the warden has gone down to the yellow lane. I don't think I can make it back in time before he kills that guardian or the walker rather, the guardian is already down in the red lane. So I'm just gonna continue pushing with my team. We have several players here and we should be able to push further than he can push on his own. So let's just hope for that. Rather than retreating, getting nowhere on our own and still having it go down, that would not be strong. So rotating over to the red lane at this point and we can kind of make a decision. We could push forward or back, but two of my teammates are actually headed back or they were headed back. Now, Maybe they're killing minions at this point. So now we can at least pick the warden off, even though he's gotten it down. So the team opted not to push further. So we have to do something at this point to kind of recover. So this is what we're choosing to do. And we'll go ahead and get in on the action. And surely we can win this with the 2v1. Hopefully he doesn't get away. Here we go. Now we have some more help. And it should be easy pick there. Now there's still another enemy here. Let's see if we can follow them or pursue them. They've gone off slightly to the left. I'm going to go around this way, see if they cut back. There we go. There's the ultimate that I was talking about earlier, where they go invulnerable. I'm going to pop my ultimate, and I managed to do a fair amount of damage to Yamato when they come out of that invulnerability, and I actually pick off the gray town that was up in the air so tons of damage like i said and just really good and is a great ultimate to trade in general there are some that you want to be weary of but just really strong keep that in mind that you can counter ultimates by using your own ultimate and once you get the leech it's even more powerful so now uh, we can get another pick here all right so we are as a team just snowballing pretty well we got another enemy left in the blue lane to the left of us. Uh, we're going to push forward this time, what I wish we had done the last time. So here we can get a walker down. Should be no problem, I would think. We get some minions or somebody in there to tank, other than myself. And I'm not sure we actually have anybody tankier than me here. So <laughs> I'm going to retreat a little bit. That should go down or be very, very close. Oh, no, they actually left a lot earlier than I expected. It looks like... 
Yamato showed up and defended, so that didn't work out very favorably either. Our push has been really poor. So again, looking at semi middle game or middle game items, the choices at this point are gonna depend on how you're doing with currency. I have worked my way up to being the highest amount of souls in the game. So I'm gonna kind of go for some of the stronger items for the middle game items as opposed to the semi middle game. Choice you're gonna to wanna to make, this is gonna vary between the matches, okay? And this is fairly true for any character you're playing or any build. Depending on how you're doing in terms of souls, you may have to pick up some of the cheaper items or more expensive ones. And the decisions are kind of be based on the amount of souls you have in comparison to other players, right? So at this point, I'm ahead in souls. I'm gonna go for the more expensive items and hopefully keep that going. And I think that I have enough power on my character here to continue taking enemies out. I lost them. How did, where did he go? I lost him. Her, rather, McGinnis. All right, my team got him. I, I have no idea where they went. Um, completely lost them. They juked me. So, what else can we do? We can keep farming, keep kind of progressing this character. And again, really important, always be focusing on souls with this character until the absolutely end of the game, okay? You want to make sure that you have the most souls, if at all possible. That's what's going to make seven the strongest and give you the most value on this character. There are a number of characters that don't need to focus on that and you can kind of get by with just the skill set as opposed to some of the items. The items of course will help but on seven it is all about getting the most powerful items, having the most souls because all these things just increase the duration of your ultimate and reduce the cooldown allowing you to spam the ultimate more often and add some leech to it which then just adds some survivability. So character is very item or gear dependent this is really bad i walked into a bad place uh, see if we can get out somehow i like didn't take any damage i'm just going to use this to zone i thought perhaps the other player may be following as well so i'm just zoning at this point and just trying to separate them so that i can get out get knocked down they came back for me i guess uh i don't know if i want to engage is this now two of us here kind of check it out all right, I think uh, both sides have moved on. So we'll continue into this, this match, rather, excuse me. We're kind of hanging around the middle. See, we've got McGinnis here, kind of poke. Don't know if I want to walk into any turrets. I don't see any turrets down at this point. I don't want to fight there, especially without my alt. So I'm just going to kind of hold my ground and there's great talent as well. So that's 2v1 in favor of them so i'm just going to poke a little bit see if anybody rotates otherwise i will have to kind of get out of here and retreat and i'm also not near my guardian so i don't have too much in terms of defense and continuing to poke i'm getting nobody on my team is rotating they've all gone elsewhere which is fine as well if i can hold them here my team can push up another lane they've gone to the far right or the yellow lane so I can continue to just kind of defend this. I am trying to walk back or retreat towards my walker. I think I called that the guardian earlier, but this is the one further back. And this is just to kind of give me a stronger defense, right? I can use that to my advantage. Let that kind of poke some damage. I don't know if I can actually hold them back. They are pushing me forward. What all I can really try to do here is AOE and splash damage them with the power surge and just kind of make them reposition to buy time and essentially kind of keep this walker alive. Just poke at them and hope that they get scared. I'm now in a, a poor spot because I can't even poke really. So I'm gonna have to try to move. They're actually positioned pretty well to where I can not actually get up and scare them back. And they are killing my walker even with me right next to it. So this walker down right about now. However, my team did push the far right and has pushed the far left, so some decent value there we've pushed up on two other lanes well only losing you know one objective in this lane overall not terrible but not necessarily seven strongest skill set is defending without the ultimate but sometimes you got to do things that you aren't necessarily best suited for of course had the ultimate been up earlier i could have used that at this point i can pop the ultimate this is what i would have loved to have done with a walker just on top of that bridge one kill, two kill. Sure, if I had been able to do that earlier, I would have. But unfortunately, it was on cooldown. Good example of how strong that ability is, though. And that's why we're building for it. So we managed to actually turn the tides on that. We trade one objective for two kills, get ourselves some more souls, and let's pick up another item. 
Not sure what I want to pick up here. I would like perhaps Mystic Vulnerability. A lot of things I would like, but at this point, I think that's what I'll pick up. I do need to grab some Leech, and I'm looking to pick up Leech probably as soon as possible at this point. We're about 20 minutes into the match, so this is what I would kind of consider getting into the late game, because I want to make a transition into picking up some of the late game items. And the Leech is really going to help us, allow us to just kind of sit out there and ultimate and get things done. Take out some of these. Teammate here, come on, help. Thank you. Pick these out. Think about the currency. My teammate needs some currency. This is one of the lower currency players, so hopefully that'll give them some boost. Item up top. I don't know if I can get up to that roof real easy. Take some more out. My teammate went up to the roof, and it was a lot easier than I foresaw. He got up there actually no problem whatsoever. It just went right up there. <laughs> so let's rotate back over. And team fight going on here, we have a large number of advantage from what we can see in the minimap. Maybe enemies hiding. And the line of sight oh. came down really quickly. Oh wow, I don't know how I dodged that. So here we are. Now I get some help. I, that was a charge shot from the enemy, which does pretty good damage and somehow must have just missed me. I not like I took any damage from it, so we'll get this walker down. Easy enough. Uh, two of my teammates going back. I'm gonna keep poking up. See three of them on the minimap on the left lane, so I know that I'm somewhat safe here since one's in the graveyard. Worst case, I can be a 1v2. 2v2, rather. But we should be able to at least do some poke damage here. And just having map awareness, and one one of them is up top, dodging another attack, barely. Barely evading things. Rotate over, I think I can actually... And, alright. So, zoning again, if they chose to fight there, I should actually be able to take them down. You can see that I'm leeching a decent amount of health at this point, I would like to leech more. But nonetheless, you can use that to zone. So we actually get the Guardian down while being attacked by the enemy there. So we just use the ultimate essentially in the open, force them to retreat or zone them out, and then you can kind of go about your way. It's just incredibly powerful ability, perhaps overpowered. I would expect one of two things to happen to this ultimate. I think either the duration of the ability will be reduced, or there will be a delay before the ability activates, like some of the other heroes have a 1-2 second delay, where there's maybe a cast animation and then the effect occurs. This would allow players to get to safety a little more easily, and I would suspect we may see one of those changes because this ultimate ability is just so broken at this point. But continuing with the souls here, we are now up to 21k, which is uh, about 4 or 5k more than most players on the enemy team. So essentially, a almost the cost of a late game item that we're going to be ahead so very strong go back we've got a fair amount of souls at this point let's start to pick up another item if i can get into the base that is so looking at some of the late game items definitely want superior duration so i am going to grab that before picking up the late game but i have my eye on the late game items at this point increasing the duration i have mentioned several times is very strong for this build so check out this lane Enemy is actually backing up. And for some reason, we seem to be winning team fights, but we have not had a great lane presence, and we've done poorly even when being grouped as a team, pushing in lanes. So I'm gonna try to do my best to keep pushing out the lanes. I would rather be in team fights, but only when I have my ultimate. So if the ultimate's on cooldown like it was prior to this point, I'm gonna try to push out lanes to keep up the soul income coming. And then I'll try to rotate over or find a fight. A little deeper, there's a turret down there. I hope I don't go down. So I'll outlast this wall and look at the duration of the storm cloud at this point. So this is another hero that you just outlast the duration of some of their abilities. The wall is not an ultimate skill, just to clarify, but it has a fairly long duration and I actually get the kill there. And the leech actually allows me to heal through the player and the turret, even though I ulted directly on top of a turret, which was kind of foolish to tell you the truth. But nonetheless, it works, and I've just got enough currency to point that my character is stronger. You know, now we can push into the base. 
Keep in mind the ultimate is now down, so I want to play a little more conservatively. Ultimate for seven is also very, very strong in either base, whether you're attacking or defending, because there's a large amount of open space inside of it and where the patron or the final boss is. So if you can get in here with your ultimate, get it off as often as possible. You can just zone them back into their own base. You can zone them out of your own base. Very, very strong. Bad position here. So they spawn out of where I just shot that lightning ball. So at this point I'm going to retreat. I basically don't have anything. 50 seconds is a long time. Do some poking. And three of my teammates are down. I just really want to retreat. Get out of here. One teammate coming. I'm not sure I even want to follow in. Hopefully we can both go back. Kind of linger. Don't want to completely abandon them. But I don't really want to be here either. They have a couple of resing in about 10 seconds. Might manage to kill? Maybe? Nope. You will fail. At this point, the ultimate is almost up. And both teams coming back. One of our players is clearing a lane. You can see we've completely lost the right lane. And I can ult to counter this if I want. Please push them back. We've got one up top that's getting hit by the ult. Two up top. I think they've all retreated now, but large chunk of damage. Can cancel this, but I'm still ticking enemies. You can see the number is kind of increasing. So I'm actually ticking the enemy patron in the base, which is was the numbers on the left. You can now see it at the top of the screen here. So even though the enemy players had retreated, I was still dealing damage to the final boss. So I can just do that like, free damage. So I can just leave that ultimate going. Continue taking it down. A lot of currency at this point. I don't know if we're going to make it back to the base. If not, we may be able to end here. We have three players down on their team. We should at least be able to push this phase. Is not good for me. Everything on cooldown is a very strong close range. Hero against me. Can I get out? I believe I'm out. Uh, still chase me, but I have a teammate chasing them. They take them down. Great. So now I can decide what I want to do. We'll pick up some currency. Maybe we'll go back. Take a ride back to the base. So, we make it out of there unscathed for the most part, continue our lead with the souls. At this point, we are, I'd say about 6k ahead of enemy players, so that's essentially a full item. Not much of a difference from where we were before. We picked up an additional thousand, but it's not enough to make another item. So this is probably the point in the game where you can stop focusing on simply collecting souls. And now you just want to make sure that you're involved in every team fight possible and using your ultimate in proper position whenever you can. Get the most value out of it. But there's no longer really that focus on getting every single soul that you can because the advantage is going to start being limited in terms of how much additional or how many additional items you get. Just that lightning ball. Not my best throw. And thrown it at the ground where they were going to land rather than the wall where they're fall down. Maybe we could just learn our lesson. So my team is basically gone back or dead. Another one down. They've gone over to the orange lane. Their teammate there is going three on two. Yeah, jump out and halt. And good positioning there. Really like the positioning that I got that ult off on. That's going to either zone them or kill them. And we're doing some damage over there. I, yep. I'm trouble even seeing the hero I was hitting, but you can now see them a lot better. So they're low life. Tons of damage to them. I am still alive at this point. Nope, not anymore. I did not realize where McGinnis had hid. Well, we zoned them really well, and that led to our death. But hopefully we can regroup. I think we're still... We're still definitely ahead in this match and I think that we can still close this out so the currency on both teams fairly even so the overall power of the teams is relatively even at this point but our own character is so much stronger than anybody else right now and there really isn't an ultimate on the other team to counter ours so we're just in a very strong position in order to close this match out so let's go ahead 
will get respawned up here shortly. Another thing to keep in mind as you're upgrading all of your abilities, you'll notice that I really have not talked about the number two very often, and you will use this when other abilities are on cooldown and an enemy is somewhat close range to you. But in general, this build somewhat neglects it. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to use all of your abilities, and that's true for several heroes, depending on your build. If you're not doing anything to kind of boost them, then they're not going to be that great. You may be better off just repositioning or avoiding damage. And that's kind of how I feel about the number two ability for seven with this particular build. Since we're focused on our ultimate and poking, we really don't want to get up close and personal with the two. But if somebody's running away from us and we need to reload, then that's a situation where you may use the two. But you really won't see me reference it at all other than that in this particular video. So, just trying to finish off this other player here. Okay, so let's push up to their base. If possible. And maybe I can squeak out one more item if needed. I want to work my way up to the base, as mentioned. We may be able to squeak out one more item if we happen to go back to the base a final time. So just clearing those out as I work my way up, and now we'll get there. Certainly that will put me close enough. I'm under attack. Lost one on each team. We still have a numbers advantage for about 20 seconds, so we we'll push in. I've got the ultimate. This is really nice to just drop in the middle of this arena here on the final form of the boss. Do that as soon as I start to see enemies. One coming out of the door there. So, again, we can just zone, right? And I'm doing damage. Not a tremendous amount of damage to the final boss, but it's doing some damage, as you can see, right next to the character. Leeching a ton of life, getting knocked down here. But we should go to finish off the boss. And there we go. So, that's it. Just focus on collecting souls. Focus on position for the ult. Get as much value as possible. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day. Oh, this guy is angry. Angry that I got seven. Well, I'm sorry.